recover God of Israel into your capable hands. We honor you for their lives. We glorify your name. We lift you up, O oh God. We declare that you are worthy, you are holy, and you are exalted. Thank you, O oh God, for blessing us tremendously. Thank you for speaking better things over our lives. Thank you, O oh God, for fathers that are active and present in, in our children's lives. Thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus for protecting them. Preserve their going out, preserve their coming in. Preserve their health, O oh God, preserve their income. Preserve them in every sphere of their lives. Preserve their prayer lives. Preserve them, O oh God, in the working environment. Preserve them at home. Preserve their hearts, O oh God, that they may not grow weary of supporting us as their children. Preserve our fathers by the power in the name of Jesus. Manifest your power upon our fathers' lives, O oh God. We surrender them to you, O oh God. We pray for preservation. We pray for protection. We pray that you will have your way over our fathers' lives. We pray for favor over their lives. We pray the blood of Jesus over their lives. We pray cover them by your mighty hand, by your strong hand and outstretched arm. Let our fathers, O oh God, grow into their old age. Let them enjoy us as their children in the name of Jesus. Father, may we grow a strong bond with our fathers in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, for oh God, for their unconditional love. We thank you, oh God, for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus. Have your way, Jehovah. Manifest your power upon their lives. We love and appreciate you, fathers. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. Happy Father's Day. We love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. And, you know, we just appreciate God for your lives. We really love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have other testimonies? Okay, I'm now going to hand over to Pastor. Enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, what are we doing now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad uh, you came to church. Amen. And just pray for uh, other people. Other preferring to come to church after winter, and uh, we can encourage the person, and that if it's been their heart, they determine. Oh, for me, after winter is the best time to resume church. So what's going on? We continue to love them and pray for them. Amen. And it's just a season and a period that things are happening in this way. But we press on in Jesus' name because these things were not a surprise to God. And you will navigate through this season in the name of Jesus. We will get on the other side and continue to raise our praise before the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 85 verse 6. We're going to go into worship shortly. That's Psalm 85 verse 6. Glory, glory. The Bible says on the screen, will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you. Amen. Uh, if you belong to this house, this is our anchor scripture as a church. Hallelujah. And uh, especially maybe next month, we'll spend time to explaining the vision and the mission and why we are here. But this is our anchor scripture as a church. Will you not revive us again? We're calling for revival in our time in Jesus' name. And the verb there, revive, it means somebody who's uh, it's got twofold when you study that uh, word there, revive. is The first fold is that when somebody who's called, like they are even like they are dying, the, the paramedic, when they come, they say they are reviving them. They are conducting a CPR. It's CPR. Okay, thank you. I went to school, by the way. 
They're conducting a CPR so that the person can be done work can be revived and let them function like uh, normally again in Jesus' name. Our intention here when we meet somebody who's called with the things of God or they have gone through a dry season, when they come here as, a, as we receive the word of God, as we pray, their spirit need to be revived, their prayer life need to be revived, and their zeal for God to come back again into their lives in the name of Jesus, that they will revive. And the second aspect is because somebody is on fire for God, let the fire be maintained in the name of Jesus. And he's talking about the revival. Are we together? And then because of that, that's why the church is called Revival House. Are we together? Why are we calling Revival House? Psalm 85 verse 6. Will you not revive us again? That word revive, hence the word Revival House here. And our vision as it is on the board there is revival for all God's people in our generation. We are praying, Lord, let there be an awakening. What we read in the Bible, may then those things start happening in our lives in the name of Jesus. May the fire that the previous generation had, the, the revival that happened in the 1500, the revival that happened in Scotland through John Knox, who cried out to God day and night, give me Scotland or I die. And revival broke out there. The people returned to God. The ways of God were being embraced and there was an awakening in the name of Jesus. That's what we are crying out. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Are we together? This is the reason why we are here. We are calling for revival in our time, in our generation, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Having said that, I want you just to rise on our feet and express worship before the Lord in the name of Jesus. We can just do two worship, any of the two, in any two of any, you understand my English, hallelujah. And just raise a worship before the Lord and cry out to him in Jesus' name and express worship and let your heart be touched, let your heart be revived in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord respond and meet you at the very point of need this hour in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise. We give you worship. We give you adoration. We give you thanksgiving in the name of Jesus, the resurrected the Lord. To you be the praise. To you be the worship. To you be the adoration in the name of Jesus. May let your name alone be glorified. Let your name alone be lifted on a higher. We call upon the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower. Oh, Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We worship you, Lord. We adore you. We praise your name, Lord.
It is sure. He is the God who came to deliver. It is sure. At the Red Sea, it was sure. At the River Jordan, it was you. Because you keep coming. You are your way. Yeah, you are the God who came to deliver. It is sure. The Omega is who you are. You are the beginning and the end, the Lord. Our lives are in your hand. Nothing can change.
Senhor, o meu Continue to be around, oh God. You are the king of my own. You are the kings of heaven. You are the kings of oh God over the earth. For you are the priest of the kings of the earth. To you alone be the praise. To you alone be the worship. You are God, our deliverer. You are God who came down in a burning bush. The bush is burning, yet it's not being consumed. Because you are your way. When you come, oh Lord, the natural season to make sense. You are your way, oh God, the deliverer of Israel out of Egypt. You came down, oh God. You demonstrated your signs. You demonstrated your wonder. Until a Pharaoh has to let go in the name of Jesus. You are your way, oh God. At the Red Sea, oh God. And of course, your people to walk on the dry land. You are your way at the Jordan River. The Jordan River stood as still and the people walked on the dry land. You are your way at the walls of Jericho and the walls of Jericho fell down flat. You are your way fighting, oh God, with Joshua until the sun stood as still for the young people to into battle until the war. You are your way, the miracle worker. You are your way, the promise keeper. You are your way, the one who separates the Red Sea. You are your way, who make a way where there seems to be no way. You are your way, you bring water in the wilderness. You are your way, the covenant keeping God. And you touch the lives of your people. Anybody in a dry place, Lord, looking for an answer, looking for your help, may you become the very present help into their lives. Receive a worship, receive adoration. You are your way, the glorious God. You are your way, a soon coming king. 
You are your word, the ancient of days. You are your word, Jesus, and the son of the living God. You are your word, the covenant keeping God. At their fullness of time, you came from eternity into time. As Jesus the Lord, the captain of the armies of the Lord, the savior of the world, the desire of flesh, receive a worship, receive adoration. Touch the lives of your people. Anybody in any wilderness, oh God, let the spring of water gush out in the name of Jesus. Let the spring of water gush out for Lucy's life by the power in the name of Jesus. Let the water gush out. Let the water gush out. Let the water gush out. Let the water gush out by the power in the name of Jesus. Let there be your intervention. Anybody in any wilderness, let the water come out. You are your way. The covenant keeping God. True to your word, O oh God. Receive a worship. Receive adoration. Receive a thanksgiving. Receive a thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Give your way. Glory, glory. Alpha and Omega is who you are. Alpha and Omega is who you are. Alpha and Omega is who you are. Receive worship, Lord. Receive praise, Lord. Receive adoration, this Lord. Alpha and Omega is who you are. Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. You are God, the covenant keeping God. We worship you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for responding and glorifying yourself in our midst. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, you can have your seat. Hallelujah. That door is closed. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 35 verse 27. Amen. Hallelujah. I was hoping to have my 45 minutes, but it seems it's gone. Hallelujah. When it's time, we'll stop. Amen. And we'll continue. Hallelujah. My wife was telling me the other day, this teaching, take them slowly and let us download them bit by bit. Amen. And I realized, yes, we are not rushing in here. Anyway, we are not writing an exam next month. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you know, we have been on a topic. Hallelujah. Hey. I am sweating. Anyway, it's good for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, 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 no. Yes. Yeah, thanks for the offer, but yes, it will provoke other things. <laughs> Amen. Eh? I must take out the blazer. No, let it enter me. I'm preaching. <laughs> Amen. No, I just loaded myself these two weeks, you know, the flu that I had, but thank God uh, I've been healed completely out of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Having said that, the testimony for myself, uh, the, when the flu was so bad, I went to the doctor so that I can get some uh, 
antibiotics and clear it out. Now the doctor is telling me something, so which for me when I left the doctor, I was just praising God. Amen. The doctor was telling me, that you, this is flu, and, and but by the way, it has been long since you have been here. And the last time you were here, it was in 2018, on the same matter of flu. Now it's 2021. That's how far I have never gone to the doctor. Amen. So I will just say, God, I thank you for soundness of health. I've never been to the doctor. And because there was doctors since even before Zoe time. So we've been going to the same doctor. You even tell my wife when she went there, your file is number 100, but they are already in 1,000. That's how much we have been uh, with them. But we go to them maybe once every three years. You see like 2018, 2021. Next time maybe it's 2030 or not at all. Not at all. Amen. So I uh, just thank uh, uh, appreciating God for soundness of health in Jesus' name. Amen. That even the doctor say, you have not been here for a very long time. And I was not intending to go, but yes. So we've been on this subject of uh, kingdom wealth. Uh, we've dealt with part one on the principles of kingdom wealth. We've dealt with part two. Uh, which we entitled uh, Godly Prosperity. You understand the mind of God to prosper you is holistic, is not only money, but every aspect. But however, any aspect that is out of balance, the life of a person is out of shape when some one of the area is affecting them. And uh, number three here today, which we may not finish, but maybe continue next Sunday, uh, we're talking about why God prosper us financially. Why does God prosper us financially? Part three, in the name of Jesus, probably part four as well, because of time. So Psalms 35 verse 27 read as follow. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. There is a cause that these people are favoring. And he said, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God delight when the pious people of God are prospering. God is delighted when the people of God are advancing. I am not dealing much on prosperity. We have talked already about it. The, on the word prosperity is to do well, to excel, to increase, to be fruitful, uh, to be doing well. God delights when somebody is prospering in all aspects. And in this part three, we are drilling down and go to the aspect of finances, though we touch on it already in part two, but now we start dealing deeper and deeper why does God prosper us financially in the name of Jesus? Number one is delight that, it, that it, God is delighted when a servant, the servant there can be your name, the servant there can be the people of God. When God is delighted, God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant in Jesus' name. And we say, what is financial prosperity? You can write down because we are moving now already. What, what is financial prosperity? Because we are dealing today, why does God bless us financially? What is financial prosperity? It is having financial resources available at your disposal. I'm stopping there so that that one thing. The finances cannot be seen on TV. The money cannot be heard about it in the newspaper. The, the, the resources must be available at your disposal. Are you hearing that, Kosana? They must be available at your disposal. 
in for you in order for you to live a comfortable life here on earth in order for you to fulfill your God given purpose nobody is here on earth by accident there is a particular purpose in the agenda of God that he wants you to fulfill now finances become now the tools God make available at your disposal in order to fulfill your divine purpose here on earth in the name of Jesus. Why financial prosperity? Number, and number three is to help you. We're going to deal with them one by one shortly. To help you, as I'm introducing for now, is to help you promote the agenda of God here on earth. In the name of Jesus. Financial prosperity, again, is the absence of lack, absence of poverty, and the negative effect that come along with them. Remember when somebody is poor, there is also negative effect that accompany them. Are we together? Let us talk practically. When somebody is poor, you will see even people are afraid or are staying away from relating with them. Or let us bring it in the positive, maybe on the other extreme. In a family, when somebody is rich, even if it's number 11, the number 1, 2, up to 10, they will wait for number 11 to hear his opinion before they can make a decision. Why? Is because he has financial resources available at his disposal to make decisions, to make things happen. Does it not happen even in family meeting? Let's wait for so-and-so. Why are they waiting for so-and-so? Because so-and-so is loaded. Let so-and-so contribute in the decision because the financial means he has will make this decision, whatever we are deciding here happen. Is that not so? Now, when the one who does not have money and they are number one in the family, they, even if they are not there, if this one is there, is so-and-so there, no, let now move on. But the elder brother is not there. No, he will see us when we are already moving. Why? It's in reference to tools, finances, money, mula, chambers. He's not there, so his decision does not have impact yet. How are we together? So financial prosperity means somebody has to have finances available at their disposal for a comfortable life here on earth, for them to fulfill their God-given purpose. As we say, we do not uh, follow after money. Money is a tool to accompany us to fulfill what God has called us to do. How are we together? Now, when we go into the Bible, you will, we can summarize why God bless us financially into three main categories in the name of Jesus. There are three main biblical reasons why God prospers us financially in this kingdom. And reason number one, we may get to two and three, we may do it last week, next week. When we go into the Bible, one can safely summarize the reason God bless us financially into three main categories in the name of Jesus. I, I don't see Tiniko here. Tiniko need to hear this. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Unless she's busy. The number one reason is to live a comfortable life. Reason God is blessing you financially is to enable you to live a comfortable life here on earth. Because we have said before money answereth all things. After here, church, if you want to go and take out, like in here today, remember it's a culture. When you want to go out here, even though it's Father's Day, Papa, let us take you to the restaurant. But who's going to pay? The father himself. But it means I need to have what? Finances available at my disposal to be able to enjoy Father's Day in the name of Jesus. When the money is not there, then it has brought what? Strain. Are we together? So we need finances in order to live a comfortable life here on earth. Finances are needed, number one reason for you to live a comfortable life here on earth and enable you to fulfill your God-given purpose. 
Ecclesiastics chapter 5, verse 12, verse 18 to 20. Ecclesiastics chapter 5. I am reading Ecclesiastes because by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God brought this word and caused Solomon to write this. Solomon is among the richest people on earth, and the wisest man who I ever lived is Solomon, and in terms of wealth is Solomon. And then there has never been one like that again. And then Solomon, when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you must read it with the perspective that this man now is in his old age, now he's been inspired to write some of the things himself he has inspired. When you are reading Proverbs, is in his early age. And when we are reading Ecclesiastes, is in his old age. Now in his old age, he say, here is what I have seen. I have seen it, uh, that it is good and fitting. It is good and fitting for one to do what? To eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor in which he toils or in which he works under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him. For it is his heritage. You are seeing what he say. He means this person is befitting. Is in the plan of God for you to eat and enjoy. When you don't have food and you are hungry, it is, does not mean heaven is rejoicing. When there is no food or when you are not eating, unless it's your decision, part of your prayer and fasting, you, that's why you are not in, not being in a position where you are not eating because situation compels you not to eat, then it is not in the agenda, it's not, it's not heavenly pleasing God. I don't know if my English is correct. God is not delighted by somebody who sleeps with hunger. It is not part of God's plan where you are hungry the, the day after day and it, the situation is like that permanently for years. It is not part of the plan of God. Hence, we cry out to God for help for his intervention in the name of Jesus. There may be a season in life part of the process from God where things may be hard and his God maybe may be training you, but it is not the agenda of God for you to be born, to become poor throughout and live off poor. It is not the will of God. Why? He delight in the what? In the prosperity of his servant. So it's not part of the plan of God. You were born, you have walked from eternity into time, back into eternity, but when you were here, things were tough all the way. It is not the mind of God concerning your life. Verse 19 says, as for every man to whom God has given, is God who gave, we have talked about that, riches and wealth and given him power to eat of it, to receive his heritage and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. So when I don't have food, I have given you an example here before. One of our pastor's friend in the olden day, he had gone through a rough time where things were difficult to eat even at home for the food. You understand, he will preach people are blessed. When he go home, there is no food. He will preach next Sunday, people are blessed. When he go home, there is no food. He will pray, people have breakthrough. Nobody remembers him. When he go home, there is no food. Until one day, he opened the fridge and spoke to the fridge. From this day, you shall lack no food. Remember, we have said everything has ears. The walls have ears. The chairs have ears. Your car has ears. Everything has ears. So they, he spoke from that day up to yesterday. He has never lacked food. If he does not eat, it's his own decision to pray and fast, not because of conditions. Are we together? So we, you have scripture to stand on. Lord, let there be no lack of food in this house. In the name of Jesus. How will the food come? It's none of your business. We, we are declaring the word of God into the situation. In the name of Jesus. Hence for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth. And given him power to eat of it. To receive his heritage. And rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. We can jump. You can read 20. 
in your own. But it's to express that God provides riches and wealth so that the person may live a comfortable life, may have provision for his life, may have provision for a life, may have provision for the family in the name of Jesus. So he bless you in order for you to be able to live a comfortable life. He bless you in order for you to fulfill your God-given purpose. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. There is a purpose that everyone has here on earth. Nobody is here by mistake, regardless of how somebody arrived. When we study the plan and the mind of God, you will realize what I am saying. Please listen it with maturity. You will realize even if somebody was born here on earth through rape, in the plan of God, that was not a mistake. Later in the year, they will discover why God allows such an event for them to arrive here. Are we together? And when they have arrived here, there is a provision from God for them to fulfill their purpose. So he's telling the children of Israel that are about to enter into the promised land. You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you what? The power. If I arrive, I go to work and I work and being paid. Is God giving me that ability? If I am discovering things, I've got an innovation and all of a sudden it starts working. Is God has given day. If I've got this skill, I've got that talent, I have to have the knowing within myself. It is God who has given me those abilities. You shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you what? The power. Power to get wealth. The ability to get wealth come from God. The skill to get wealth come from God. The power that causes money to be attracted to you comes from God. Why? That he may establish his covenant which he saw to your forefathers as it is this day. In the mind of God, when he's allowing finances to flow into this life, is because there is a something God wants to establish. For the children of Israel, there is a covenant which is sought to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is what he will do with them. So when finances is coming into their life, it's for, hey, there is a covenant. So when money comes, you need to find, why is this money coming into my life? There is a purpose in your life that needs to be accomplished. That thing for it to be accomplished here on earth, among the tools you need to make that come to pass, it's called finances. Hence, God allow you to be blessed financially. You will see sometimes, you may have just a degree, this one has a master's degree, but you go for employment interview, they pick you up, and you, you start flourishing in that way. It's not that you are lucky. It's not that you are cute. It's not that you had a nice suit. There is a purpose upon your life that God is allowing for that thing to be fulfilled by opening up opportunity and finances flowing in your life so that you may fulfill that in the name of Jesus. Among the prayer for every child of God to pray, God, reveal unto me my purpose here on earth. Why am I here on earth for? Because when you have the understanding, when you have the revelation, then with scripture like this become what you are challenging God on. May you empower me with what? Because you say my purpose is to serve you in this way. My purpose is to empower the teenagers in this way to have understanding how to become a teenager according to God's pattern. You have given me that passion. It's burning within me. Lord, I pray may there be provision of financial resources to fulfill that. Then when money comes, then you know I need to get a place. I need to get chairs. Children must come here maybe every Saturday to for lesson of lives and things like I am walking within my purpose. Because God knows you are doing his purpose, his purpose in your life. Then finances start flowing into that place. Because he knows there will be no misuse of what he has provided. Because you understand why is God blessing you. Are we together? We are still 10% of part three. Hallelujah. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power. I am telling you, 
some uh, people you will hear, look my connection, what they have done. Uh -uh. As somebody who understands the ways of God, you know, God, look what you have done. You have given me this opportunity. Look what he has done. Don't say it's because I am connected to that person. Uh, it's not like that. It's God orchestrating so that there may be channel of provision to fulfill your purpose in life. Hence, he's blessing you financially in Jesus' name. Amen. While on that, to live a comfortable life, I need to mention these things. There are four levels of living. We are still dealing with number one, why God bless us financially. There are four levels of living. There is survival level. I am a survivor. How do we together? A survival level in me is a level where somebody is trained financially to meet the basic need. It means I am surviving. When I don't know if I will pay rent, I don't know if I will have petrol next week, I don't know if I will have uh, groceries the last two weeks of the month, it means I am surviving. I am under strain financially to meet my basic need. Are we together? It's called a survival level. Then we move from there, we go to another level called a comfortable level. A comfortable level, it means I have my basic need met without stress. Are we together? It means I have a house, I have a car for means of transportation. I have money for my children's school fees. We have grocery. We can put on clothes. If I need to buy something on the shop on that day, I can be able to buy it. I am living a comfortable life where I am not strained financially to meet my basic need. Are we together? It means comfortable life. Then from there we move to a luxury lifestyle. A luxury level of living. It means I have in access. You understand by a luxury? It means basic needs in terms of car, house, accommodation, school fees, and whatever is not a problem. Then because these are not a problem, I also have access to do other things. If I bless somebody and I give them money, even 5000 I am not messing up anything within my own life. How are we together? I can meet somebody else's need, but my own need are still intact. I am now moving into a luxurious level of life. How are we together? And level number four now, we, what we call extravagance. Extravagance, it means somebody now can spend what is even reasonable. More than what is reasonable. They can splash money. They can do all sorts of things. And they don't mind. It means they have lived now the life that they come into extravagance. I am saying these four things to say this. As a child of God, when you are in a survival level or you are in an extravagance level, these two have the potential to make you move away from God. How are we together? They have the potential to make you move away from God. Because if you are surviving, where to meet your basic need is a problem. If, when the pressure is too much, you will end up compromising your value so that you can have put food on the table. When you meet somebody who has gone through issues of life and you wonder how did you end up becoming a prostitute, it's because you don't know what they went through in life that brought them even to that level where they know this is wrong, but let me do it so that I can have food on the table. Are we together? It is a survival level. As we say, survival level, it means you are strained financially when it's a, you are st to meet your basic need. To have transport even to get to Jobek. If there is, you have planned for three trips because your work is in Jobek, you know in this week I will go to Jobek three times. The moment your work say come the fourth time, you cannot be able to go. Why? Because the finances are strained even in terms of transport. When that Situation is like that and persistent. It's, it's got a high potential of somebody to compromise the ways of God in order to put food on the table. 
So and it's when somebody is like that, then the prayers over the scripture according to what God has said must be your daily bread so that you move from that level into your comfort level. And in there to know what is my purpose here and earth so that when there is a supply of financial resources, it's in order to meet my divine purpose and utilize this for, as tools and to live a comfortable life. Are we together? As we say, lack of money is a problem. That one we know. Lack of money is a problem. Yes. You have agreed with me. So no. Lack of money is a problem. You will see when there is no money, even between me and my wife, you can find we are quarreling over other petty issues. But when you dig deeper, no, our pockets are empty. The issue we are fighting if money was there, we could not have fought over that. Are we together? You will see it brings strain. It causes people to die prematurely because of lack of money. Hence, we pray for God intervention that your purpose here on earth has to be supplied and has to be backed up by financial resources in your life and for living a comfortable life and number two, for being able to fulfill your divine purpose here on earth because lack of money is a problem. Poverty is a problem. Hence, we have to deny poverty. I reject you, including your mother-in-law stress, including this. You have to move out of my life in the name of Jesus. Any poverty-related issue have to be away from my life in the name of Jesus because lack of money is a problem. Are we together? I have said the other Sunday that you will see people, they can be called by God. Like here, I am called by God to go and minister. And because of lack of finances, I may divert and run away from my area of calling. Let me go and do even security guard so that I can have income to feed my family. But with deep down, I know I have run away from the calling. is because of lack of money. Lack of money is a problem. So like that, when you are in a survival level, we have to cry out to God. Hence, we are taking this teaching slowly. When we are done, it is prayer and fasting with this understanding. Let's cry out to God for his intervention in the name of Jesus. And then on the other extreme, which is called the extravagance level, it has the tendency of making the person, I do not need God. I have everything and I, I, I don't have a problem with money. Are you together? When there is a lot of money, when one is not careful, you may run away from God because you may not see the need for God because I have everything I need and over and above. Are we together? Lack, uh, the issue of money. The, 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 uh, as I'm saying this, I remember there are people who are so rich back home that when the movie is going to be aired in New York, remember when the movie is released first in the cinema is in New York, they will leave Africa. They go to New York and watch the movie and they are back in Africa on Monday. They don't have a problem with money. They have a problem on how to spend it. And they were doing it like that. The whole family, where are they? On Thursday, they are going to New York. They will come back on Monday. They're going to watch a movie. It's about to be aired this weekend. Are we together? They didn't have an issue with money. Are we together? They had an issue on how to spend the money. In the name of Jesus. When you are in that level, it's called extravagance. And the scripture warns us, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. We are still on reason number one. It says, command those who are, what, rich in this prayer. God doesn't have a problem with richness. He the problem, he's the one, the heart to move away from God. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty or arrogant nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18, let them do what? Let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give 
willing to share in the name of Jesus. How are we together? Both extreme. We are still on the reason number one. is for you to live a comfortable life and be able to fulfill your God-given purpose. While in there, be aware of there is a survival level, comfort level, luxury level, extravagance. Survival and extravagance have the potential to move you away from God because of the stress of lack of money or because of the abundance of money. There is no time for God. There is no time for church. I have got everything more than enough. Are we together? There is something that my wife and I used, uh, she started and uh, joined at one stage to watch. It's called, I don't know a program, you might have known it, it's called, I Blew It. Amen. I Blew It. He chose how people, they didn't have money today. Suddenly, the next day, they have got 20 million. Their mind goes crazy. They start doing what? Crazy things. They have moved from survival overnight into extravagance. The person does not sleep. They are in this club. If when they are in the club, they buy things for everyone there. They are the main. The, the next day, they are in Soweto. The other day, they have gone to Pretoria. They, they are everywhere. They parent. They, they don't have parent. They, they, the parent will call. They can't find the pastor. It, the person does not even eat. There is one where they are busy partying. The person collapses. Not that they are sick. No, for four days, the person has not been eating. He's only drinking expensive things. Why? Because money has come. They were surviving. And now they are into extravagance. The other one is explaining, he has changed. All of a sudden, he ordered his suit from Italy. He cannot go to the mall yet. They don't have what will satisfy him. So he's ordering the suit from Italy. And they bring suit from Italy. Like that. There is no way you will wear something, maybe a shirt for less than 2000 uh -uh. But the same person, two weeks earlier, was living on 50 rand. But today, they cannot, a 50 rand, 200 rand shirt cannot enter their body. Why? They have gone into extravagance. And you know the issue with money. If your mind was not prepared, your body cannot stay there. It has to go back where your mind is, was fixed. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Let me break it down for you. If the mind was not prepared, to handle millions. When millions comes, it's a matter of time for your body to go back where the mind was. The body can only go, can only be where the mind has been. If you take the body somewhere where the mind has never been, it's a matter of time for you to go back there. Are we together? That why, as a child of God, we start by transformation in our mind. Can you prepare your mind when 10 million come into your life and you still live the same life you are living? Are we together? Let the mind be prepared in the name of Jesus. There is somebody who asked a question from some time years back. Since then, it has become part of our culture. If you give us 2 million here today, my wife and I, we know what we'll do with it. Hallelujah. Now, when I ask you, will somebody give you five million now? What are you going to do with it? Why? Your mind has not arrived there. Even if it comes, the body will take you back where you belong. Because the mind has not arrived there. That's why we prepare our mind to say, when you're having plan, I want to do this and I want to stick to this. What you are preparing your mind when the money comes is to execute what was there, not now to come and bring. That's why you will see people start doing other things. Why? Because there were no preparation. I am telling you. And then to know if there is an issue, even here now, when you get just after church, somebody give you five thousand. What does it? What comes to your mind first? Eh, tonoi. Don't answer me. Answer yourself. What goes into your mind first is a way of training yourself. I'm telling you, those are the things we train. Even myself here, I train myself on those things. 
When I get here 100,000, what will I do? How will my mind be? I'll be going home, my wife, I'm coming to eat, but I see tin, 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 uh, SMS, 100,000. I turn. I am no longer hungry. I will eat tomorrow. Why? Things all of a sudden, my body changed, my mind changed. I start getting hot. I say, what's going on? Money has come. Why? Because the mind was not yet prepared. How are we together? So, as a child of God, you need to have a plan. When I have a million rand today, how will I handle that one million rand? Are we together? If I owe a house, okay, I'll pay the house, I'll do this, I'll do that. that. When the money comes, is to implement this. You mean your mind has already arrived to a place where you don't have a home loan. You don't owe any bank anything according to your mind. When the money comes, is now a tool to execute that thing. Then you are not. Otherwise, I am telling you, you can test it yourself. If you don't have 500, let somebody give you 500. What goes within you by that time? What I'm saying here is to introspect yourself. What goes in by yourself? I gave you the example the other day. My uncle, when you see my uncle laughing, then you know he has money. He's just laughing by himself. He's entering the house. He's singing. The voice goes up like that. He's singing and whatever. You know my uncle has money. But if you don't, you know the day he does not have money, just pass, shake him by mistake, then you will know that he indeed is broke by his reaction. Are we together? So those things, we prepare our mind according to that. I'm telling you, these things, as a human being, it's part of a self-leadership, how to lead yourself, is when money comes, what goes in my mind at first? I am telling you, those are the honest things you need to do as we are teaching on this. When I get money, by yourself in your, bed, uh, in your bathroom, the mirror is there. Tonolo, I have received 10,000 today. What goes in my mind? Are we together? When something in my mind, oh, when I get this mind, I'm already in Santon. I'm buying these shoes. I'm doing that and that. That what is in the mind, I'm telling you. When the money comes, the mind will push you to go and do that. So hence, we have to program ourselves. When resources come, what do I do with them? Are we together? That's the way these things work. Sometimes, uh, like for me, uh, let me share this, but I've been delivered out of it. In the olden days, I was crazy about watch. When I see watch, something within me can't sit still. How we together? I just, oh, this watch, you would make me crazy if you just present me watches. Understand? But that thing is linked up to how you grow up. You are, hey, this thing you just watch on TV and whatever. How did I get delivered from that? Where not even if you give me a million, I will not be driven to go and buy a watch first. What brought deliverance? One day, I went to China. China, China. We enter China. In 2014, I went in China. When I went in China, what do you think was the first thing to, for me to start looking for? A watch. I went and started looking. I went to the watch market. You know, in China, when it's a watch market... Is from maybe Kailami corner to this other corner. It's only watch. It's only watch. I'm telling you, building 10 floor, watch. S seven building going like this is watch. Only watches. And I look for the watch. I'm not, they say, let me take you to the back room because they want to sell also other watches. All of this brand, but they don't have a license. Since you are interested, come, let me take you. They take me to their house. I enter in the house. They take me in one of the rooms. Me, I thought it's a bedroom. They open. It's a huge room. It's only watches. All the brand of watches that you can think of. And those that you don't know, they were there. From the floor to the ceiling is watches. The four walls is watches. The cabinet here of uh, glass clear cabinet, they open like this watch, tag, they open this, this watch, they open this, this watch, only watches. Are we together? 
then ask me, after one hour, did I buy a watch? No. I didn't know what to buy. And that's how I got delivered. Because I got there, it's only watches, and I touch this, I touch that, I touch that, I look the money, the money somehow it becomes small again to, for me to buy even watches. I never bought watches for myself that day. I left, I told my wife on the phone, I went to a place, and now I realize that they delivered. That drive to say I must have this watch, I must have that watch, die. Why? Because of multitude of watches. I got crazy. I don't know which watch. I look here, watch, 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 tag, this watch, that watch, that watch. Across its watches. You know luxury watch, it's nice maybe if it's three or four. Now when it's in the thousand, it's just messed up my mind. I didn't buy even one watch. From that day in 2014 up to today, even if a million come, that drive to say the first thing I must buy is a watch has died. It has died why? Because I got to a place where all that is there is watch. And I realized, Lord, thank you for deliverance. Even here now, try me with one million, you'll see. I won't buy, <laughs> I won't buy a watch. I won't have that drive that I must buy a watch. No, it has died. If I buy, it happened, I might buy. But there is no that drive that the first thing is a watch before I can think of my wife. It has died. Why? Because of the multitude. That has how it has helped me. I am saying this to say, as a human being, as a self-leader, when money comes within you, what is the first things that come to your mind? What is the drive? That comes to your mind. Sometimes even when we are standing by the uh, ATM to draw money, I, I just observe people's behavior. Remember now it's social distance so I can see what you are doing. We are not uh, bumper to bumper. You will see somebody you are there taking money. The moment you take money, the walk to the ATM has changed. Now the person is walking like this. Tell you what, hey, what's going on? No, is the money from the ATM into their pocket. Then the walk has changed. They were walking normal, but all of a sudden now, the walk has changed. Start now greeting the security, the car attendant. One, what's going on? No, they are withdrawn money. And it is in their pocket. It has awakened something. What is that thing that got awakened within you when money comes? Hallelujah. We are still at number one. We will continue next Sunday. The reason God bless you is for you to live a comfortable life and fulfill your purpose. Money become the tools to enable you to do that. I demonstrated here the example. You may have this idea. I want to do this. I want to start selling this. I want to have a website. When you go to the person for the website, they want money. So when the money comes, it's to create that website so that all of these things come together. Money becomes now a tool in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's end it here because number three and four, two and three, we need another 40 minutes. Amen. We have said all of these things and the assignment I am giving by yourself. When money comes to you, what trigger comes within you? What comes in your mind? What triggers within you? Now look, whatever triggers within you, if it's a wrong thing, it becomes a prayer item. Lord, I don't want these things. Sometimes other people, when money comes, the language changes. There is no more respect for other people in the way they are talking. When you ask what is going on, no, the person has money. He means money, when it's more, it has the potential to make you to be an arrogant person and change. Are we together? Because somebody even say, when somebody is poor, we don't know whether they are humble or it's because of poverty. But wait for money to come, it will tell us that they were humble or they were just poor. Are we together? When money comes within you, what type of emotion, 
Or what are the things that arise within you? Are those things godly? If yes, praise the Lord. If they are not godly, trust God for those things to be healed from those. Why? God doesn't have a problem to give you money. He has a problem to lose your heart when money comes. When money comes, God, I can no longer talk to my wife like this. Then it means I have a problem. When money comes, my wife, what's going on? You are up and down. You are not even giving me food. You are telling me food. your food is there in the microwave. What's going on? No, my wife has money. Say, hey, money has a potential to bring division here. Lord, help us in the name of Jesus. Because what he is giving us all of this issue is just 10,000, 20,000. Imagine 10,000 has landed here. It means we have to have two houses. My wife's house. The husband's house. Why? Because money has come. Are we together? That's how we do self-introspection in the name of Jesus. Even here I've told you, even if I get, I don't know how many, they will say this is the latest watch, but it's not going to drive me crazy like before because deliverance has happened in that area. When money comes, what is awakened within you? Hallelujah. Let us a keyboard. Having say money, let us offer to the Lord uh, offering in the name of Jesus and appreciate God with our giving and then we'll make a prayer. Please, next Sunday, you need to be here for the continuation. Next Sunday, part four, Brother Innocent is still. Why does God bless us, prosper us financially? Part four. So we deal with the others in the name. Of Jesus. For those who have an offering, you're welcome to come and place it here and a way of blessing the Lord in Jesus' name. For those online, if you want to give, the banking details will be posted there. You're welcome to send your offering electronically in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the song Moyo Wanga. Hallelujah. One can come. You can join us for, to do prayer with us. Moya Wanga. children will be here, we do the prayer in the name of Jesus. We are creating these teachings for empowerment of our mind and understanding. When we are approaching God, when we pray, prayer and fasting, we need to change the calendar. We must move it to end of July. <laughs> Let's talk in the week. When we pray, we are praying God, here I am, empower me financially. Because now there is understanding. And during that season, if there is anything from today, even as we are continuing, Lord, when money comes, it always drives me this way to do that thing. I don't want these things. It's not according to your word. Please help me in that area. I don't want these things to become a stumbling block to finances in my life in the name of Jesus. Help. And when there is deliverance there, because God knows when the money comes, I will still have you. When the money comes, I will still have you as my child. And I'm concerned about you, then this thing driving you away from me. In the name of Jesus. Are we together? Lift up your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every life here today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray may you touch the lives of our children. We pray that you may touch the lives of every woman here today. Every man here, Lord. I am praying. 
in the name of Jesus. Let their lives be empowered by you. Empower somebody for a while. Empower our children for a while. Let them not go through the struggle we went through, oh God. Where to have even a bank account, you have to wait to be 21, 22. When your first salary comes, sometimes there were no even bank account because of how the issue of finances are being in our lives. We ask you, Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you may empower us and empower our children in the name of Jesus. Let there be supply of resources in order to fulfill our God-given purpose here on earth in the name of Jesus. You give bread to the eater, and you give seed to the sower. May there be the supply of bread, the supply of seed in the name of Jesus. It is you give us the power, the appetite to enjoy war, to eat and enjoy. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Father, we are praying nobody under revival house, Lord, shall live a life that is strenuous, Lord, surviving year in, year out, Lord. We are praying let the power of poverty be broken by through this teaching let deliverance come through this teaching let the illumination come father through this teaching let there be an opening of doors by the power in the name of jesus into the lives of your people into this house that your name may be glorified in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit i invoke your blessing over your people and your preservation of their lives COVID 19 shall not come near them Jesus' name. May your face shine upon them. Be gracious to them. May you lift up your countenance toward them and grant them your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.